Get ready to be serenaded as John and Mark enjoy a romantic dinner with Kill Switch Engage. Damn, Damn. pull. <laughs> it's your pull. Crash Lamb of God's bus. Well, not literally. Everything you hear is true. And then, <laughs> and, and then some. And, then some. <laughs> and jam with Thrash Legends Exodus. Plus, Devil Driver, Kistery, and a lesson in Swedish metal from Soil Work. Circle Greta. Circle Greta. It's all happening now on Talking Metal on Fuse. Communication, confrontation, dedication. Now is the time to speak your mind and trust the nation. Heavy Metal's dynamic duo, John and Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome to another edition of Talking Metal on Fuse. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. You can only be great when you're hanging out with the one and only Bud Friendly. All right. Bud. I heard that you have uh, recently returned from a pretty interesting vacation. That is correct. I went overseas and adopted a wife. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got the one and only Metal Mike. <laughs> He's metal for life. This guy's metal Those for life. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, guys. On the couch, we have some Talking Metal family members like Ken Pierce from piercingmetal.com, a site I highly recommend. Ken Pierce. Thank you, guys. Great to be here. Great to be here. Love your site. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you so much for the support. And we've got the one and only Juliana from Coyote Ugly in New York City. Hi, thank you. Thanks. And we have Matt, who is a fan of all things hard rock and metal. What are yep. some of your recent shows that you've been to, Matt? Uh, I just went to Kill Switch last week down in uh, Jersey. That was an awesome show that played with uh, Every Time I Die. It was great. Cool. Yep. Well, we actually just saw Kill Switch with Lamb of God, Devil Driver, Sawyer Work, unbelievable tour, and it was really cool to hook back up with Lamb of God. Every time I see this band, they blow me away. Growing up, what other bands kind of shaped your youth? Uh, you know, like all the old thrash bands, Anthrax, Testament, you, know, you name it. I was listening to it. If you go down the list of bands that like we kind of came up listening to and idolized as kids while we were learning to play and stuff, you know, we've really toured with most of those bands. Pretty much all of our, you know, early heroes in metal. Through all the touring that Lamb of God has done, they've gotten to meet a lot of people that influenced their career. And I was, you know, curious to hear what they thought about Dave Mustaine being they toured with him on Gigantor. I can tell you with great certainty that Dave Mustaine wound up being a far bigger character and a lot more fun than he's even made out to be. I love you when you still hated me. Everything you hear is true. And then, and, and then some. And then some. <laughs> yeah, he is a force to be reckoned with. He's off the chain, man. Yeah. I totally agree. Dave Mustaine is definitely a character. But you hear all sorts of stuff about Dave, but he was really, really cool to us when we interviewed him. Absolutely. He sat down on the couch and played guitar with you? That's, yeah, that's what I was thinking. The only thing is he did make fun of my Brian Setzer shoes. Which you're wearing today. Which I am now wearing. <laughs> that's Brian Setzer and he had his shoes. <laughs> I'm surprised you put them back on after that. I know, after that interview, I actually wouldn't wear these shoes for like a month, but they're back. You know, it's interesting to talk to the guys in Lamb of God, because there's a lot of other people who are also fans of them. Kurt from Metallica. Yeah. Uh, Chris Poland from Megadeth. Alex from Testament. Dave Grohl. Cool. cool. Yeah, really cool. Really nice guy. Uh, he was just, just as cool as he could be, man. Just singled all of us out, talked about music. and new tunes like he did it wasn't just like oh lamb of god yeah i love your stuff no he knew what he was talking about dave is a true metalhead he's recorded a song with tony iomi he's done the probot record Looking for relief in your miserable life. dave grohl has such an incredible audience and to go and do a, a metal record and it, it just expose people that might not even consider metal to be real you know they, they still think it's about yeah. makeup and dragons and satan Ken, what do you think of the Probot record? Probot record was definitely interesting. It was unique for uh, a drummer of Dave Grohl's caliber who'd been known so much for something like Nirvana and Foo Fighters to try something that was 
uh, slam-basting metal, but those who have read about him knows that this is what he grew up on, and he's a big metal fan all his life, so it was, it was made sense. Speaking of cool albums, Lamb of God released the deluxe producer edition of Sacrament, where all of the tracks are isolated, and you can basically go in and remix the album. When I was starting to get into metal, I used to um, get the King Diamond records because the band was so amazing. But, and I, I did learn to love King Diamond, but for a long time, all I wanted to do is just somehow get rid of the vocal track, you know, so I could listen wow. to this band that was kicking ass. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Like <laughs> if you want to sing it yourself, you can. If you want to turn off the drums and do them yourself, you can. You know, it's just it's more, much more interactive and allowing people to do a lot more with the music than just saying, you know, here, here it is. As always, it was great to hook up with Lamb of God. Definitely go out, check out that deluxe producer edition of Sacrament, and look out for their new DVD. I'm hoping on the new DVD there might be a rematch between Randy and Mark. We'll never get out of this hole. You know that in the last yeah, DVD? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm hoping there are no fights on this DVD. Okay, I like the fights. After the break, the guys enjoy a magical evening with Kill Switch Engage. <laughs> the you <laughs> pull. <laughs> and get thrashed with Exodus. It's all coming up on Talking Metal on Fuse. But first, a lesson in Swedish metal from soil work. If I give you a word, can you say it for me in uh, Swedish? Headbanging. Huvudskaka. Huvudskaka. Metal horns. Metal horns. Cast up horn. Cast up horn. Circle pit. Circle gröta. Circle gröta. Stage diving. Sen dyk. Heavy metal, uh, tung metal. Black metal will be svart metal. Hair metal will be hell metal. Or uh, pudel rock. Poodle rock. That's what we call it in Sweden. You know, they look like poodles. And... Hi, that's uh, Ola from Solwork. Tjena, det här Björn från Solwork. Ni tittar på Snacka Metal på Fuse. TV. TV. <laughs> On this day in history, March 4th, 1984. On March 4th, 1984, I saw KISS for the first time. My parents, who were also KISS fans, took me and six of my friends on a two-hour drive to the Stanley Theater in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. By this time, members Ace Frehley and Peter Chris had been replaced by Vinnie Vincent and the late, great Eric Carr. This was also KISS's first tour without makeup. Opening for KISS on this tour were German heavy metal masters except. The next day, we all wore our Lick It Up shirts to school. The following day, we wore our Accept shirts. Since that concert, I saw KISS on every single tour. And I even had to sleep outside once after missing my train after one of their shows. And I'd do it again. And that was this day in history. I'm glad you mentioned Accept. What a great band. Yeah, uh, I love Accept. And I thought it was very interesting that you chose to do a piece on the non-makeup record, or one of the non-makeup records, Lick It Up, with your makeup on. Well, I had to keep the makeup on because everybody knows Kiss belongs in makeup. When people think of Kiss, they think of the makeup. Absolutely. Yeah. What's funny is that we got into that same conversation with the guys from Kill Switch. I was kind of bummed out when Lick It Up came out. I was just like, Oh, put the makeup back on. It was a bummer. What's your favorite Kiss record? Lick it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool to go out to dinner it with was. him. It was like a first date. Hand holding, <laughs> slow dancing. <laughs> Not exactly, but we, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. we had a good meal and we uh, spoke about some of the first bands that they got into. You know what? I don't know this about you. What was the first band you were so stoked on as like, like a little kid? Very, very first one? Yeah. Wham. You too. I like the Huey Lewis sports record. That was sweet. That was awesome. It was pretty it great. Was nothing but hits. Where did you grow up listening to? 
He loves Striper. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a huge Striper. Really? Fan. Oh, God. Who, who was it? Yeah. Yellow and Black Attack? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. I was into him. Their most recent one was called the Reborn. Yeah, Reborn. I, haven't, I haven't got to hear it we yet. got to get that. Dude. I need it. Yeah. I had no idea Howard would get so excited about Striper, a band I love. One band that I did know Howard and Joel are huge fans of is him. I'm reaching for the shadow. the biggest selling Finnish band of all time. I actually saw them at some show up in Syracuse near where I'm from, and I thought they were really great. They're a really fun band. Uh, you know, we're big fans. You know, we, uh, actually, before they ever came to the States, we flew over just to see a show in London. Wow. I will show. admit, I do have a lot of him stuff. Oh, yeah, Him's kind of like the new Kiss, though. They have everything <laughs> on the market. Yeah, There's going to yeah. be dolls pretty soon. <laughs> just saw him in concert in, in New York City, and uh, I've seen them a number of times. This is by far the best time I've ever seen them play really? live. Yeah. Did they play that song about love? They play that song. <laughs> yeah, they, they did play that. I kill you. <laughs> the Kill Switch guys were really pretty hysterical, and I figured they would be because they have this rather, I'd call it funny video for Dio's Holy Diver, which is a rocking cover of an amazing rocking song. Yeah, I love the original video. Right. Ride the tiger. You can see his stripes, but you know he's clean. But the Kill Switch version was just unbelievable. I just can't stop thinking of Justin with that king crown on and that beard. Not only remake the song, but they kind of remake the, the video, video in their own They covered the way. video. Yeah. It kind of had to be that way. Yep. You couldn't think of any other way. You gotta pay homage to that little guy, you know? <laughs> He's freaking sweet. <laughs> I met him when I was like 15, and I've been a fan since I was probably like 13 or 14. So many great records through the years. He's like the godfather of metal. So it's great seeing a band like Killswitch Engage offering up respect from the present to the bands of the past and even having some fun with the video. Speaking of metal icons, yes. Adam D, who was a total character, had an unbelievable story about meeting the late great Dimebag Daryl at the Metal Hammer Awards. The one time I got to meet him, it was freaking sweet. Uh, there, there's the green room, and I was walking past him, and I was like, hey man, and he's like, I'm Kid Gore! Like just holding a bottle of whiskey. He puts his arm around me and says, listen. I haven't seen a dude with moves like that on stage since that old Gene Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Take your f***ing pull. <laughs> Get your pull. That was a night. Yeah. <laughs> he accepted his award and he threw it at somebody in the crowd. He just, then he went and sat on the drum riser and took his shoes off. <laughs> I was like, what's he doing? He actually wrote an apology for that. He was like, sorry about that. It was amazing. It was awesome. Dimebag was so cool that I wouldn't mind if I got hit with his trophy. Or by a metal hammer. Well, at least Dimebag, he offered an apology, and it's all good. Definitely. We had a great time hanging out with Kill Switch. Lots of great stories. Definitely. Great guys. Coming up, John and Mark team up with Exodus for the ultimate metal jam. Plus, the metal detector and more when Talking Metal on Fuse returns. But now it's time for the Talking Metal Top 3 with Devil Driver. What's up? We're Devil Driver. These are the top three things to not do if you come to a heavy metal show. Do not start drinking vodka at 7 o'clock in the morning. It's just not going to work out. I'd say number two, when you wake up, don't go right to the Jaeger booth because you're not going to last the whole day. Number three, do not check your MySpace in between songs of the band set. <laughs> Look at this face, you gotta come get Is this get the, the tabloids or is this a uh, is music this show? Everything's a tabloid. <laughs> Life is a f***ing tabloid.
Hi, we're Exodus. And you're watching Talking Metal on Fuse. Fuse! All right, we're back. And you're just in time for the metal detector. I want to talk to you guys about some music that I think sounds awesome. Black Tide, Light From Above. Incredibly young, incredibly good, straight, loud metal. Check it out. Airborne, everybody is talking about these guys. The Airborne sound is uh, very energetic. Sweat soaked. Yeah, it's... Boozed up. Yeah. Sex, good times. It's just rock and roll played really, really loud and raw. Running wild, loud, straight ahead, hard rock from down under. Check them out. And now I'd like to dip into my record collection and pull out an oldie but a goodie. It's time for the Lost Classic. 1983 was an incredible year for metal, and this is just no one of the reasons why. Saxon, you cannot beat the Power and the Glory album. The power and the glory. Great, great stuff. It brought their sound out of the 70s into the 80s. Without question, their best record and possibly one of the best records ever made. Mark, we had the unbelievable honor of jamming with Exodus. And we jammed on the classic Metallica Seek and Destroy. Kill Em All was such an important record in the history of heavy metal, the history of thrash. And Exodus, I mean, one of the four founders of thrash metal. <laughs> Initially, I was going to play guitar on the song because, right. of course, the one and only Tom Hunting was going to be behind the kit. Such an amazing drummer. Yeah, uh, unbelievable thrash drummer. But he decided he wanted to do co-lead vocals, put me behind the drums, and they immediately made me feel comfortable, took the edge off because both Tom and Gary commented on how cool they thought my snare sounded. During the jam, right. all the guys were looking to me to kind of make sure I was kind of keeping the song together, and here I'm thinking, the Exodus guys are looking at me to keep the yeah, song together. Yeah, well, there was like, a lot of communication, yeah, like, like for me, like to look into the eyes of Gary Holt, you know, somebody that I admired since I was a kid, right. really was was uh, an amazing experience. Break out the peanut butter. It's time for a metal jam. <laughs> When did you first learn Seek and Destroy? I couldn't even tell you, I don't know. Yeah. It's just one of those things, um, just, you know, being a Bay Area band around yeah. another Bay Area band, you just kind of knew each other's riffs back then. You know? Right. It is kind of interesting being that Kirk, of course, used to be in Exodus many, many years ago. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to show him how the song's meant to be played. <laughs> <laughs>
tell you the truth, I was listening to, to some of your double bass work, and uh, I was saying to myself, man, I hope I don't embarrass myself today. Oh, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Well, besides yeah. the double bass, Tom is also the best singer that Exodus has ever had. <laughs> he got the opportunity to get in front of the mic, and he took it and never looked back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> an honor to jam with one of the true legends of thrash metal. Well, thank you guys for hanging out today. Absolutely. We had a great time. Thank you. Check out piercingmetal.com. Go down to hang out at Coyote Ugly. Check out fuse.tv slash talking metal. And check out talkingmetal.com to listen to the podcast. Thank you, Bud Friendly. Thank you, Mike. We will see you sure. next time on Talking Metal on Fuse. <laughs> awesome. This an animal, man. You're just shredding these big ass sticks.